Everybody Needs a Rock by Bird Baylor with pictures by Peter Parnell. Everybody Needs a Rock. This book is for Jessie. Everybody needs a rock. I'm sorry for kids who don't have a rock for a friend. I'm sorry for kids who only have tricycles, bicycles, horses, elephants, goldfish, three room playhouses, fire engines, wind up dragons, and things like that if they don't have a rock for a friend. That's why I'm giving them my own 10 rules for finding a rock. Not just any rock. I mean a special rock that you find yourself and keep as long as you can, maybe forever. If somebody says to you, what's so special about that rock? Don't tell them, I don't. Nobody's supposed to know what's special about another person's rock. All right, here are the rules. Rule number one, if you can go to a mountain made out of nothing but a hundred million small, shiny, beautiful, roundish rocks. But if you can't, any place will do, even an alley, even a sandy road. Rule two, when you are looking at rocks, don't let mothers or fathers or sisters or brothers or even best friends talk to you. You should choose a rock when everything is quiet. Don't let dogs bark at you or bees buzz at you. But if they do, don't worry. The worst thing you can do is go rock hunting when you're worried. Rule three, bend over more, even more. You may have to sit on the ground with your head almost touching the earth. You have to look a rock right in the eye. Otherwise, don't blame me if you can't find a good one. Rule number four. Don't get a rock that is too big. You'll always be sorry. It won't fit in your hand right and it won't fit in your pocket. A rock as big as an apple is too big. A rock as big as a horse is much too big. Rule number five, don't choose a rock that is too small. It will only be easy to lose or a mouse might eat it thinking it's a seed. Believe me, it happened to a boy in the state of Arizona. Rule number six, the size must be perfect. It has to feel easy in your hand when you close your fingers over it. It has to feel jumpy in your pocket when you run. Some people touch a rock a thousand times a day. There aren't many things that feel as good as a rock, if the rock is perfect. Rule number seven. Look for the perfect color. It could be a sort of pinkish gray with bits of silver shine in it. Some rocks that look brown are really other colors, but you only see them when you squint and when the sun is right. Another way to see the color is to dip your rock in a clear mountain stream, if one is passing by. Rule number eight. The shape of the rock is up to you. There is a girl in Alaska who only likes flat rocks. Don't ask me why, I like them lumpy. The thing to remember about shape is this. Any rock looks good on, on a hundred, with a hundred other rocks around it on a hill. But if your rock is going to be special, it should look good all by itself in the bathtub. Rule number nine. Always sniff a rock. <laughs> rocks have their own smells. Some kids can tell by sniffing whether a rock came from the middle of the earth or from the ocean or from a mountain where wind and sun touched it every day for a million years. You'll find that grown-ups can't tell these things. Too bad for them. They just can't smell as well as kids can.
Rule number 10, don't ask anybody to help you choose. I've seen lizards pick one rock out of a desert full of rocks and go sit there alone. I've seen a snail pass up 20 rocks to spend all day getting to the one it wanted. You have to make up your own mind. You'll know. All right, that's 10 rules. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. If you think of any more, write them down yourself. I'm going out to play a game right now that takes just me and one rock to play. And I happen to have one right here in my hand. The end.